thank you all so much for being here. What I'll do to begin for everybody, uh, you guys, all you registered folks will know this. Uh, you have a chance to gather these materials. We're going to have a few activities today. And so I want to make sure you all have this chance to get ready, get some paper, some crayons and pencils, some scissors, not too sharp, maybe, or with parental supervision if you're really young. We need some tape, pen or a marker. You've got all the writing utensils. And then something to do a rubbing with. Maybe you've never done a rubbing before, but they are so, so much fun. Uh, a leaf, a rock, a stick, a coin. I have a megalodon tooth back there and a moon globe. And I might use those for my rubbing, just like a, a rubbing of the moon. We'll see how it goes. Uh, and then a stapler or hole punch and some string, yarn, or ribbon to pull it all together, to tie together everything that you're doing. So make sure to gather those materials. You guys all have that slide up. Take a second if you haven't got them already. Uh, I am going to dive in and we will get underway. So first and foremost, my name is Jesse. I'm with a group called Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. Uh, we're an organization that's all about bringing conservation, adventure, and science into classrooms and homes just like yours all around the world. And I'm so thrilled to have been invited to be the host for today's program because today's program is very exciting. And now as many of our Canadian friends will know, what we like to start a lot of our programs with are something called a territorial acknowledgement, uh, an understanding and recognition that the land that we're on has been occupied for thousands and thousands of years by indigenous peoples across Canada, the US and beyond. So where I come from is on the land of the Haudenosaunee, the uh, Anishinaabe and the Mississaugas of the New Credit. And I really encourage at least our Canadian friends I think there is an American equivalent to this, but nativeland.ca is a really great resource to find out whose land you're on. Maybe you happen to know the Indigenous communities that are in your places in Florida, Virginia, Vancouver, and more, but I really encourage you to check that out because there's some really rich cultural history and tradition there. Now let's dive in. Today we are going to learn about trillions of trees in this amazing workshop, and as you might have guessed, it's all about trees. Today we are going to become tree detectives. We're going to explore different types of trees. We're going to learn fun tree facts, and there are a lot of fun tree facts in the world. We're going to create a nature journal and do some nature rubbings and learn how to care for trees in our communities. We love your questions. So again, that chat is your one-stop shop. If you want to share questions, your thoughts, how much you love some of the videos and things we're going to do, feel free to head there anytime and share. Now to begin, to get you acquainted with that chat, for those who haven't, we have a question for you. How many trees are on Earth? Now, all of these are very, very big numbers up on the screen. We've got 42 million, 228 billion, 318 billion, 400 billion, 3 trillion, and 100 trillion. Now, I'll give you a hint. The name of this workshop might be a good guide for you as you come up with your answer. I'd love to see what you guys think. I'll give you a second. Da, 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 da. I won't sing the whole song for copyright reasons, uh, but... We want to see what your thoughts are in the chat. What do we got? E, Alexa. We got Austin thinks E, F. Okay, so we got a few people thinking 3 trillion, a few people, one person thinking 100 trillion. B, Nicholas, way to go. Okay, a little bit lower. These are all really, really big numbers, but I love your answers. Thank you guys for the enthusiasm. So think about it in your, your homes. Think about it in your groups. We got one more answer, and then I'm going to share it. F, so a lot of you are thinking those, those trillions, which is great. Great thought. Now, it isn't 100 trillion, that's just outlandish. There's too many, that's like 30 Earths. But we do have 3 trillion trees on Earth, which I did the math, and is about over 400 trees per person. So if you think about your school, maybe your school's a pretty big school, you got 400 kids. Imagine there are 400 trees for every one of those. Or imagine every other kid in your school was a tree, and you are the one person. That's sort of what it's like. There are an awful lot of trees on planet Earth. Now, Anna, who's joining us in the chat as well, is going to type some cool facts about trees and some of those other figures that we learned about together just a second ago. But good answer. And for every guest, E, bravo and way to go. So I'm going to turn it over to our first speaker du jour. I'm just the host. I'm the hype man. But we have two amazing people today. We're going to walk you through this Trillions of Trees workshop. And so first and foremost, let me bring up on our screen Danica Streco from Project Learning Tree, a really, really amazing organization that is committed to educating kids like you about the magic and wonder of our forests, about trees, and so much more. So Danica, welcome to the broadcast and take us away. 
<laughs> Thank you so much, Jesse. So yes, hello everyone. I'm Danica. My pronouns are she, her, and I am Project Learning Tree's Senior Manager of Education. As a teacher, I get to learn from all of our areas of work, including standards, looking at how we care for our forests, conservation, research on climate or animals and plants, community engagement, and my personal favorite, education, engaging teachers and students just like you in exploring and learning about nature. Because guess what? Nature is all around us, whether you live in a city or in the country. And with Project Learning Tree, we are committed to using trees and forests to inspire action and grow future forest and conservation leaders. So I'm so happy to have you all joining us today and look forward to seeing what you learn about trees all throughout today's program. And now I want to introduce my co-presenter today, Janice. So take it away, Janice. Hi, everyone. I am Janice Fold. I work at the PPS station in New York, and we are, our team is, we're the creators of CyberChase. I work on the CyberChase team, and I'm curious, where are all my CyberChase fans out there? Can you give me a thumbs up? Do we have some CyberChase fans in the house? Oh, I see a bunch of CyberChase fans. So CyberChase is America's longest running math series, and it involves a team of curious kids who you can see in the spaceship here, Jackie, Matt, and Inez, and their buddy Digit, who are summoned into cyberspace to help solve problems. And the only superpower they have are they can't like necessarily go through walls and they can't necessarily zap people with electric eyes, but they have brain power and that's what they use to solve problems. And it's a superpower that we can all use. They use math skills and problem solving skills to be able to overcome different problems that they encounter. And some of the problems that they encounter are from this guy here. Can you see the hacker, that big guy who on the right there and his friends buzz and delete. Um, so that being said, and you know, one of the things that we really try to do, and the reason we're doing this workshop today is we've been learning a lot and sharing a lot of information about the environment and nature. And today, like Danica said, we are, and Jesse said, we are celebrating trees. And I'm just curious, how many of you can see a tree from where you live? I can see a nice, beautiful tree from where I live. Excellent. Or have trees near you. Okay. I see some hands there. All right, Danica, back to you. Oh, I see some hands up. Great. I think we all have a lot of trees near us, huh? That's great. And because Really, trees are all around us, so I'm so glad that so many of you can spot some. And with approximately three trillion trees on Earth, trees are really important to people and the environment. So I would love to hear from you joining us today. Why do you think trees are important? What kind of things might they offer the Earth or even us as humans living here? Hmm. So again, folks, if you guys want to share in the chat, we'd love to hear from you. What do we think about trees? What makes trees so, so important? Let's see. Clean air. They help us breathe air. We got air from Austin and Alexa. Way to go. Shade from Farah. Nice. You guys are right on this. <laughs> Very quick to the chat. Wow, it's amazing that you should say about the shade and, and the importance of trees. That reminds me of an episode on Cyber Chase called Buzz in the Tree. And Buzz has this video game that he loves to play. And it's all about this tree. And he just looks at the tree in his video game. But his friends are trying to show him that outdoors, real trees are terrific too. And they're going to explain to him why trees are terrific. So as you watch this, I want you to look at what are some of the ways that trees are terrific and that they help us. So let's play the video. Real trees are the strong, silent heroes of the environment. Real terrific trees? Oh yeah, trees are terrific. They help make healthy soil and they hold back water to help prevent floods. Trees also provide shade and keep us cool on really hot days. And here's the best part. Trees are kind of like us. They take in air, good air and bad air, and they trap the bad air in their bark and leaves. When they breathe out, they breathe clean air out into the environment. Real trees are a beautiful thing, Buzz. Real trees are a beautiful thing, huh? What are some of the things that the Cyber Squad said that, that how trees help us? I think I heard that they help make healthy soil. They hold back water to prevent floods. They provide shade and keep us cool on hot days. They take in air. 
and trap bad air in their bark and, and leaves and breathe clean air out. And then they do a lot of dancing. Oh, no. I don't think they said the dancing part, right? <laughs> they said the yeah, well, sometimes the the, the branches uh, sway in the lead, in the wind, right? And it could look like dancing. Oh, I see some hands up. Do you guys have some other thoughts here? Let's see in the chat. So many thoughts. Nice homes for animals. I love that. What a great thought, Natalie Jean. Uh, yeah, this this group Anna's got it right on the ball. You guys know so much. <laughs> you beat us to it with the video. Nice homes for animals. Food, air, shade, protect the environment, oxygen, uh, a good use of oxygen too, guys. Uh, just some fantastic answers from everyone today. Thank you so much for all this, uh, these fantastic pics, guys. You know what? I'd like to see a picture. Danica, do you have a picture to show us some more about how trees can help us? I think I have a great picture to share. And because you are all so knowledgeable, you're sharing so many great things. I'd love for us to take a look together and see what other ideas for how we can see trees having a positive influence on the environment around us. So just like we heard from the Cyber Squad, they definitely filter and store water. And so that's a great use of, you know, them filtering it through the ground. They also provide shade and cool us down when it's a hot day in the summer. They clean the air we breathe. So absolutely, you know, taking that carbon we breathe out and use it to grow their bark, their trunks, their branches and leaves. So we might breathe out that carbon dioxide, but trees need it to grow. Oh, lots of great ways that they can help us out. They also provide shelter and habitat, so places to live for animals and sources of food for both animals and people. They're a great resource for providing wood for building materials. When products are made from wood, they can continue to store that carbon for years and even tens of years, decades after. They also create places for us to play and that supports the mental well-being and reduction of stress. And I'm definitely a big fan of a way to relax and have fun. And finally, they provide jobs and support communities. So these are just some of the ways that trees are so important for us. And I bet you have some more to share in the chat too. Did this picture maybe remind you of anything else? And I, we'd love to see those ideas continuing to come in. Oh yeah, absolutely. Food is our first one that came in from Mariah, way to go. Uh, anyone else have any other thoughts or nuances of these? These are the broad strokes things, maybe specific animals, specific ways in which it cleans the air, maybe specific jobs associated with trees, anything you want to share. And Livia, I'm glad you think it looks interesting. That is the goal of today's workshop. We want to interest you and get you excited about trees and forests, because they really are spectacular. Maple syrup. Nora, I don't know where you're joining from, but I come from Southern Ontario. And I must say, every time I go to the grocery store, I get the real maple syrup, because it is the best thing in the world uh, on pancakes and waffles. Makes many things. Look in your rooms around you, whether you're in a, a, a home, see how many things are made of wood. These cabinets from here are made of wood. Wood. Uh, I've got a lamp whose base is made of wood. My wooden leg for my, no, I don't have a wooden leg. But if you have a wooden leg, that's a very helpful thing. Janice has got a cool thing with her initials on it, a box. Look at this. I want to uh, put this. Oh, that is so neat. That is fantastic. Park. Yeah, so parks, I'm so glad you mentioned this, Danica. And I think it's a really under uh, appreciated thing that uh, forests and trees provide for us is a place to play and relax. Think about how you feel when you go out into the the woods or walk by trees think about how different it is from a place without that shade without those trees and it's just it's night and day uh it, it's so much more enriching to be in a forest and i hope everyone's had the experience to be in a, a provincial or state or a national park uh, to really have that, that wonderful experience so great answers guys uh and danica i think we've got much more to, to explore with this <laughs> Absolutely. So with learning about how trees are so important to us, it's also really important for us to learn about them. And a great place to start understanding trees is thinking about kind of the right tree in the right place for the right reason and what makes the right tree. 
So I'm really hoping that you're going to join me in becoming tree detectives, or as I like to call them, tree detectives, in exploring and investigating what we can find out by observing and even identifying, finding out what kind of tree we're looking for. And two kind of main types of trees that we come across, and you can let us know in the chat if you've maybe seen some of these trees in your neighborhood or on any trips that you've done. And those two different types are conifers or coniferous trees and broadleaf trees or deciduous trees. And conifers have seeds that develop inside cones. So you can see on the left-hand side of your screen that lovely cone there. Maybe that looks a little bit familiar from something that you've either seen on a tree or dropped below a tree. Most conifers also have those needle-shaped leaves and they stay green all year round. So they don't lose their leaves and you can actually kind of see those green trees even in the middle of winter. You can think, do you have any of those in your neighborhood? Or maybe you bring some into your seasonal celebrations as well, because they're nice and green in the winter. Now, deciduous trees have those nice, broad, flat leaves. I always think of them as a very nice shade giving tree on a hot summer day. And generally they lose all of those leaves in the summer. And so those seeds actually could be flowers that create pollen. Um, and you can see an example of an acorn tree or an oak tree on the right hand side of the screen. So using our detective skills, I have a little game that I'd like us to play together to try out using these tree ID skills. And what you can do is as we kind of go through these, you might want to make a big cone shape with your body. So you could raise your hands over your head and kind of touch the tips of your fingers together. If you have space for a conifer, if you see a picture of a tree that you think might have a cone or a needle, or if you think that it's a deciduous tree, you can stretch your arms out into those big, long branches and big, leafy broad leaf. And that's how you can share with us that your guess is that it is a deciduous tree. I so love games. Do you guys like games? Oh, I'm very excited. Excellent. And make sure that you do have a little bit of space around you for those different types of trees. And looking at the screen in front of us, take a look at what's there and you can show me your guess. Do you think that it is a conifer. You can make a nice big cone here. I'll scooch down in my chair so you can kind of see how I'm making that cone. Or if you think it's a deciduous tree and you can stretch out your arms into the, these nice long branches. Ooh, a lot of, lot of arms stretched out to the sides. I think they might, they might have that broad leaf idea that you, you acquainted them with down pat. Way to go, kids. You want to share Excellent. in the chat too. If your camera's off, maybe, and you want to type in the chat, you're welcome to do that. But I like all our open arms. Way to go, everybody. <laughs> all right, let's try the next one. What do we think this one might be? And so you can look for all sorts of clues in the picture. Do you see any cones hiding in there? Do you see any needles? Do you see flat, bright green leaves or any flowers? What do you think? Do you think this one is a cone, conifer, or a nice broad leafed deciduous tree? And again, absolutely share in the chat. Oh, I love that we're even using icons. Yes. That's wonderful, Austin. Austin, way to go, man. <laughs> Cones on the video. Oh, like people are on the ball today. We got a whole bunch of code. How long do we want to keep them here, Danica? Do we want to keep them as cones for like an hour? See if they can hold their hands up that high? No, <laughs> they're doing not. a great job. We'll move on. We have one more bonus round. That's kind of the tricky one. So let's see what we think. We can go through this one a little bit quicker. You can, again, share in the chat or show me with your arms. What do you think this little sapling might be? And it's always a little bit trickier with a lot of even plants and animals that sometimes they look different when they're in their young form. Even people, kids sometimes look different from adults. And so give me a quick guess and then we'll 
flip over to our answer key next. I see some cone uh, body do. language here. Oh, oh you guys four. are so good. You cannot be fooled. Awesome. So our conifers, you can see that absolutely we had our Douglas fir sapling in the middle and our spruce at the end. And on the next page, you'll see a couple of examples like our oak tree, as well as I know in my neighborhood, we get a lot of these sugar maples and cherry blossom trees in the spring. So I'd love to see in the chat Maybe if you know of any trees in your neighborhood or one that you can see out the window, um, and maybe you know what it's called or if it's a deciduous or coniferous tree. Wonderful. All right, so that's kind of one way that we love to learn a little bit more about trees in our community. And as you're sharing with us in the chat what you might see around you, we have another set of clues that as tree shapes of leaves. So if particularly in the summer, in the spring, this is a great time to go out. If you did get to go out and collect a leaf for your leaf rubbing today with our nature journal, you might have some leaves that look like this. So thinking about, you know, are they long, are they thin, are they oval and round? It's great to describe all those different shapes. If you do have a branch from a conifer, maybe the needles are flat or rounded or square, hopefully all these familiar shapes. And then if we look at the picture on the screen here, you can actually even see that margins of leaves, those edges around your leaf might be serrated, like they have tiny little teeth all around them, or they might even be kind of smoother and rounded and lobed and look like someone almost took a bite out of the corner of them to give those nice rounded edges like our oak leaves. And next, it even goes beyond the shape of those leaves. So even how it atta attaches to the tree, you might look for, you know, those simple leaves, so just one leaf coming off the branch, like a maple or an oak or an aspen, or you might even explore and see these compound leaves, which are actually coming off the branch, but then all these little, and this is one of my favorite words, leaflets, tiny little leaves that make a pattern, like you might see on an ash or a walnut or a sumac tree. And finally, a clue that our trees can give us are leaf arrangements. And that's again, looking at these multiple little leaflets on a branch and actually seeing how they're arranged on the twigs. So whether they're opposite one another or they come off in bunches or one of my favorite terms, quarrels, where they actually create a little circular pattern. They're kind of twisted around the twig. So, so many cool ways that we can learn about what type of tree it is by identifying all these different features of leaves. You could get close up to a tree and be examining all those great leaf features and learning a lot just by using your eyes and being really observant tree detectives. Hey, Danica, you know what? That reminds me back to Buzz in the tree. Um, yeah, so like Buzz, you know, remember I said he had his favorite tree in his video game? Well, I remember there was a part of the episode, Buzz in the tree, where he was describing the bark, the branches, and the leaves in his tree. So would you guys like to watch that with me? We're going to watch that part. And I would as, love to see that. Okay, and as we watch it, I want you to see if you can figure out what kind of leaves, based on the ones that Danica just showed us, what kind of leaves are on his tree, on his game tree. All right, should we, ready? Thumbs up? Okay, I see thumbs up, we're ready to go. Tell us what you love about the branches, bark, and leaves. Oh, uh, let me think, uh, let's see. What I love about my game tree is that it's got really thick, strong branches and, uh, and big, so I can grab onto them when I climb. Big, strong, thick branches. Yeah, and the bark on the trunk is really rough with deep grooves. Good for climbing. 
rough, deep grooves, good for climbing. Oh, and the leaves! I just love the leaves! They're kind of shaped like an oval, and the edges are like teeth. Oh, and the ends, the ends of the leaves come to a little point. Oval-shaped, pointy ends with edges like teeth. Got it. Great description, Buzz. Wow, so he was talking about all the things he loves about his tree. Now, let's bring back that other slide we saw of the leaves, and let's see, could you guys figure out what kind of leaves he had on his tree? Were they like these ones? Let's see. Maybe we can go to the next slide. Let's... Oh, we might have to go back. Oh, they... there's some great examples. Were they like these ones? Let's see. Were there? Oh, I see some people saying things. Well, let's see. Were there? Where are the tree leaves ahead before? Do we see other leaves? Those ones. Oh, I saw people raising their hands. Let's go back to that one we just saw. I think they were like which. What do you think? Ah, I see some hands raised. That one on the left, right? The one that looks like the teeth. Yeah, the one that's serrated. I think that's what Buzz had in his tree. What do you think, Danica? Are those the kind of leaves he had in his tree? I think so. I think Buzz said that they reminded him of little teeth. And that's exactly how I always think of serrated leaves. Excellent. That's great. Well, thank you, Buzz. That was very helpful. Yes, that was great to explore those leaves and think about how Buzz is thinking about them too. And so we have a couple of more fun ways that we can be tree detectives as we start to think about what we might wanna put in a nature journal. And so one way that you know, we start to think about trees is that they're living things. They're, you adopt a tree, kind of like you might adopt a pet. And you want to be able to know whether they're healthy or not. So trees actually require some of the same things that people and animals need to grow. And that was actually in our first Cyber Squad video, they mentioned that. For example, they need lots of water, just like we do. They need nutrients and food, and they also need room to grow. And so with these needs, a tree might struggle a little bit. And so together we can actually look just like a doctor is that you might, if a person is ill or they might have symptoms like a cough or a fever, that helps us identify what might be wrong. And so trees actually have a way of showing us those different symptoms through their leaves, looking at either a change in color or different kind of shapes, pieces missing from a leaf, or even that insects might make little holes or different signs that we can tell that something might be wrong. And so with these images on the screen, you can see some symptoms. And I would love as tree doctors for you to jump in on the chat and take a guess what might be causing some of these symptoms. If you had even a plant in your house that suddenly changed color, turning black or brown or having kind of different spots on the leaves that might be a different color, or they're even losing their leaves, that's probably not a great sign if it's not fall and that those deciduous trees are naturally losing their leaves. And so absolutely, I love this first one is not being watered enough. Definitely as we get into summer and the weather gets hotter, just like we need more water, our trees and plants often need more water too. And I'd love to just give you one more minute to throw another couple of guesses in the chat. Any other reason why we might see some of these symptoms on a tree before we reveal the likely cause? We've got maybe too much water too. I like these water ideas. Maybe something else. I don't know what it's like where all you are today, but where I am for our Canadian audience, it's about 35 degrees Celsius, which is about 97 or so Fahrenheit. Ooh. A little bit, a little bit toasty. Maybe that plays a role. We've got lack of nutrients from to here. The soil's not good from Alexa. Oh, not enough nutrients from Nicole as well. 
Uh, poor Amanda has spots on, on her leaves. That's too bad. Maybe we'll find out any help by the end of today's program. Too much water, bugs, water it. Farah, Jordan, Austin, you guys are uh, too old. Does the plant age out maybe? Just like sometimes people get spots, maybe plants get spots too. I don't know. I think I have my first spot now. I've turned 30. We're getting there. Um, great. And you guys are the most engaged audience ever. Cyber Chase Project or Energy People. Bravo. These are some great picks. Viruses, yes. Mariah says. Nice. Yeah, definitely having a disease there. So if we go to our next slide, we'll reveal some of these. And again, these are just broad changes that might happen to our plants. So again, extreme temperature changes, just like Jesse said, if it's unusually hot or it gets really cold, those insects or even maybe chemicals that you didn't know were being introduced by the area around. And of course that water, either too much or too little and some hungry insects getting in there too. So you did an excellent job of being tree detectives and identifying some of those reasons. So next up, we have a fun tree fact for you. And I would love next time you're out to see if you can even spot a stump from a tree in your neighborhood that maybe was cut down, or even sometimes if a branch has been cut off, you can see this cross section, this cut of a tree that we actually like to call a tree cookie. Not to be confused with a tasty snack cookie, I would not recommend taking a bite out of these, but they are a great way of learning about our trees. And so trees, you know, maybe they can't talk to us, they can't necessarily share their life with us verbally like we're doing here with our program today, but you can still learn so much from these tree cookies. They give us lots of clues as tree detectives telling us about changes in the tree's life. And so looking at the very center of this tree cookie, you can actually take a look at for these rings. So take a close look, see if you can maybe see some light rings and some dark rings. And by counting rings, you can actually find out the age of a tree. Pretty cool considering that trees can be around for a long time and you might not know how old it is. So you can actually start in the middle of the stump or the cross section and count the first dark ring you see, counting outwards until you reach the last dark ring right before you hit the bark. And the total number of dark rings represents, it shows you the age of that tree. Now, an example on the screen, that might take a while. I am still totally open if anyone's a keener that wants to try and count some of those rings to throw in a guess in the chat how old this tree was. But just like Jesse said that he just turned 30, if Jesse was a tree, he would have 30 dark rings showing those 30 years of life and growth. And a couple more cool things that you can see on this cross section is that you can actually look for damage too. So there's this little kind of dot, you can see the bottom arrow pointing to that actually might show a scar from a fire or where an insect got into the bark and created a change in that ring. And you can actually See the change to the width, how wide those lighter rings are, sometimes in years where there was lots of water or lots of nutrients and the tree grew even faster or more that year. So I love those guesses. 40, you're doing a great job, Jordan, counting all those tiny little rings on the screen. So a great way to learn a little bit more about a tree if you get the opportunity to see that cross section of a branch or a stump. I think 50 is a very good guess as well. There are many, many rings on that tree cookie. You know what, this is making me really excited about going out in nature and observing things. And I, I think I want some place where I can like put drawings that I make of trees and stuff. So I'm going to show you guys a very quick way to make a nature journal. You ready? So I'd like you, maybe we can, we can take the slide off right now. We're going to take the paper that we have and we're going to take one sheet, two sheets, three sheets, two or three sheets. 
And if you just have one sheet, that's fine too. And I'm just lining them up here. See how they're all together? Three sheets of paper. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these and we're just gonna fold them in half so that the ends match up just like that. See that? I just have all three together and I'm just folding them. I see some good folding going on and we're just gonna fold it like this. And now, is everyone with me? Give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up. I see some folded notepads. And now what we're gonna do is, there are two ways that we can make this stay together. One is with a handy dandy stapler. I see a thumbs up from uh, Marty. There we go. Okay. So I'm gonna take my handy dandy stapler and I'm just going to take it and pinch the corner. And then I'm gonna pinch the middle with the stapler and the end. So I'm gonna do it in three spots. So now my pages aren't gonna fall out. And look at this, because I have three, only three sheets of paper, I now have one side, two, three, four, five, six, seven, woo, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 different sides of paper that I can draw on for my little nature book. Um, and, but you know, if you don't have a stapler, you can also take a hole punch and you can punch a hole in your page like this. And then you can take a piece of string or yarn. Can you see this? I just have it. I took my three sheets. Actually, this one is only two sheets and I folded it up and I'm going to have a, one of my colleagues come up in a minute to show a nature journal that she made. And I'm going to take a piece of yarn here. And I'm just going to tie it in the corner here. I just made one hole on the side and I'm going to tie it here. And I have my handy dandy nature journal. There we go. And what I've done is I've written, can you guys see what it says? My nature journal. And I drew a tree and it says my name, Janice. And I'd like to bring up my colleague, Sharice, who's going to show a nature journal that she made. Sharice, are you there? Hi, Sharice. We're going to ask you to unmute here. One second. Let's unmute. Hi, Sharice. Hi. Can we see yeah. your nature journal? I, I hear you um, were busy making a nature journal too. Oh, it says my nature journal. And I, Is it focusing? Yeah, kind of. I think, yeah, that's beautiful. And I see you. It looks like, did you use some ribbon? I did use ribbon. <laughs> and then on the inside, hold on. Is it focusing? Oh, you may need to unblur your video. Let's see if I can see what I yeah. can Yeah. So she used you. another technique <laughs> where she made three holes and used ribbon and then drew pictures on her um, nature journal. And while she's unblurring, Danica, it looked like you had a nice. Oh, wait, we're back to Sharice. Okay, you can show. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> what color nice. ribbon is that, Sharice? Ta da. Green. Oh, nice. Specific, I'm not sure they green, but. Put a tree in mine, added a little vocabulary um, and by Prospect Park. So. Oh, so Sharice, that's in Prospect Park, which is in Brooklyn, New York in the United mm -hmm. States. Excellent. That's near where I live too. Excellent. And I just have some news on my second page. Oh, that is fantastic. You know, that makes me wonder. Mm -hmm. I wonder, you know, I have my, my empty book and I would really like to add something to my pages and mm -hmm. Danica, do you have any ideas of what we can add to the pages? I like what Sharice did, but I'd like to maybe do um like a rubbing or something. Could you, do you have any thoughts on how we could do that? Thanks, that, Sharice. Thank you so much, Sharice. I loved your drawing of the leaves and that is great practice. I have to say, I'm still practicing a lot of different drawing techniques. And so one way that I like to include leaves in my nature journal is to actually add them as a leaf rubbing. And you'll get a closer look in just a moment. So let's see if I can share my camera here so you can get a closer look at the leaf that I selected and some tips and tricks for creating a leaf rubbing, whether it's its own separate page in your nature journal, or maybe you wanna create a cover page with a couple of different leaves and objects on there.
All right, hopefully we can see that. And so you can kind of see my cover page started with some examples. But what I always love is that if you select your leaf here, this one is actually from a rhododendron just near me. And by first picking out your leaf, you might want to give it a feel and kind of see is there a smooth side on one side, if there's a rough side, maybe with that nice prominent vein on there then you can actually, this is a great side to start with for your leaf rubbing, because it's going to have some more texture, some more um, kind of feel to it that will come through in that rubbing. So once you've placed it down on a flat surface, you want to get the page of your journal, whether it's already attached, or if you have it separate and you're going to staple or include it in your journal afterwards, and you can just place it kind of loosely over the top. And what I love with rubbing is this is a great way if you have old pieces of crayon, you can actually save them and create a little kit maybe to take out with you because you can do bark rubbings or rubbings on trees. And by having that kind of crayon that doesn't have the paper on it, it gives you a really nice flat surface to do your rubbing with. You can also use a pencil crayon or even a number two pencil. Anything that you can rub over your leaf will help bring that leaf through. And this is one of my favorite parts because you can just kind of see it appear. So even just starting with your crayon, rubbing it, you know, applying a little bit of even pressure, you can see all of that texture of that leaf starting to come through. So you might need a moment to look down if you're doing this along with me. You could do little circles to get the outline of your leaf and then maybe go over it back and forth a couple of times to transfer some more of that texture on to your page. And this is such a cool way of keeping track of the leaves that you're looking at because we all know that sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to save those leaves. And so it's great, you can have different colors, like as you can make kind of a cover page with it and line them up, maybe have them overlapping, or if you wanna just record how your leaf looks, then you can add that as a page just with one leaf in That's beautiful, your Danica. Box. You can really see the details of the leaf there. That's amazing. And so again, if you made one with me, I'd love to see that on video. I am going to add that I always love dating my work because then if you come back in a different season or a different month, you know exactly when you saw this leaf. You might even want to include the name of the tree it came from if you know it or the location like the park that you found it in. So I'm just going to put today's date. Oh my goodness, it's August already but it's great to kind of date that so that you can go back in your nature journal. Maybe you're going to do multiple rubbings and actually see how that looks. Oops, there you go. So again, you have your nice leaf still there if you want to do something else with it. And I actually even as a, an additional page created a little pocket just by putting a square of paper and some tape that I can actually keep my leaf in too, to keep track of it if I want to. Super, super cool. And I don't know if you've noticed, Danica, because you're too busy making the coolest <laughs> nature journal cover of all time, uh, but some of our students have been sharing their pictures too. So way to go guys in the chat. Awesome. Thank you so much for letting me share that with you. I'm so excited to see all of yours. And there's just so much that you can do with a nature journal. It's a great way to record all of your investigations, get out there at different times of year, keep adding to it, whether you're stapling or attaching more pages. Um, and again, by keeping them nice and pocket sized, you can take them wherever you go. You could even tuck your crayon in a pocket in your nature journal to keep it with you. Yeah, another thing you can do too is if you print out a photo or you have a photo, you can tape that into your journal as well. So it could be drawings and photos. Absolutely. All right. So thank you so much for letting me share some ways that I like to include those investigations in a nature journal. Of course, we would love to get you out in nature 
exploring, thinking about how you can care for trees or maybe even plant a new tree in your neighborhood. Definitely urban forests, so trees right outside where you live, come in many different forms. They include street trees as well as trees in parks, gardens, and backyard. And we'd love for you to take that active role in looking out for them and really becoming those tree detectives, finding out how you can care for them. So some quick tips to take away with you today is, you know, really thinking about how your tree might grow. Does it have enough space? Trees can get pretty big. Of course, seeing if it has that cool shaded area or ways that it can have water or even maybe watering a community tree if you have time to share a little bit of that. That tender loving care, that TLC, is exactly what's going to help make that tree grow for a long time and be really successful. Because just like anything young, it's going to be extra you know, vulnerable. It's going to need some extra care, some extra attention in those early years of its life. And so thank you so much for learning with us on our program today. I hope that you shared some questions in the chat. I know that you were great at responding and sharing all of your ideas and knowledge, but we'd love to stay in touch and you know, even keep an eye out on the chat as those come in. If you're looking for more ways to connect to activities and things that you can get out and explore in nature, Project Learning Tree at CLT.org has some free family uh, activities that you can connect to and get out and explore. And WNET also has these great links that Anna is sharing there in the chat for you to get out and connect and keep that investigation going. Project Learning Tree has a great network of coordinators across the country. Again, if your parent or is nearby to scan that QR code or even go to plt.org, you can find out where we have coordinators in every state really helping connect to what's going on in nature locally close to you. So they have resources and tips, particularly to kind of catered towards your community. And of course, just like you've been sharing with us on the screen, you can see um, that you can follow us on social and share. We'd love to see how your nature journal is going to grow and change as you get out there and explore. And absolutely, we'll share a link to the PLT Canada site in the chat in just a moment for you as well to get connected to all the great resources that we have for you in Canada. Fantastic. What a program, everyone. Oh, Anna's beat me to it. I was just about to share that uh, in the chat. Um, but this is, uh, again, so many resources. If you guys didn't get this, this program will be recorded. You'll have the opportunity to check out these links again uh, in the not too distant future, which is great. Uh, it certainly seems like you guys learned a lot and knew a lot coming into this, which is amazing. You guys are so engaged, had such great questions, had such great knowledge. We have students that are sharing book ideas in the chat. Way to go. Um, really, really appreciate your enthusiasm and passion for trees or forests and for cyber chase all those great thumbs up at the beginning of our program together and uh again as danica mentioned i just want to leave up our, our big slide here uh just the fact that we are celebrating you we want to give you as many resources as possible to keep the learning going keep that excitement going you can check out both organizations on the social media platforms facebook twitter pinterest uh instagram and more uh go check them out they're on the screen right now if you want to look up some of those links uh and uh i I hope you, you do, because there's a lot more to learn than we can possibly do in one 45-minute broadcast. Uh, Danica and Janice, I want to bring you both back in. Just to say a, a quick uh, hello again. Make sure everyone's on camera together. I'll, I'll end my screen share there. You've got everything in the links on the bottom of the screen, so you are all set to go. Uh, so it's back to the three of us. Thank you so much for the opportunity to host. You guys have been the best audience ever. And Janice and Danica, is there any last message? I know you've shared a bunch of great resources. Any last message you want to leave our kids with before we end our broadcast for today? Danica, I was just going to say, I encourage you to check out the CyberChase website. And my colleague Nora just put in the chat a link to the CyberChase website where you can watch the whole Buzz and the Tree um, episode. But I am really looking forward to going out and drawing more things um, uh, about trees and, and other things in my nature journal. Danica, how about you? 
Absolutely. And I know that we also shared a quick form in the chat because we always want to know what you're interested in exploring next. So if you follow that link and send us an idea, then we'd love to connect for another program diving in deep some, to some more nature exploration. Outstanding. Well, Danica, Janice, and our entire community of families and kids have joined us today. Thank you all so much. We will end our broadcast there. Check out those links. Uh, make sure you click that link for the evaluation. We'd love to hear your thoughts and have a wonderful rest of your afternoon, everybody.